Hey, Monkey Nation, listen, uh, we've been talking about this for a while now, and uh, if you missed out on the last deal where you got $200 worth of free gear, check out uh, what we've got going on right now. This is over at monkeyworksprep.com. You'll get a three-month kit, and you'll save $200 right now, and uh, that will not last forever, but for every three-month kit you buy, you get $200 off, and that's the current special that's going. And uh, remember, monkeyworksprep.com. Jump over there and get it now and get that uh, food that you need to get you and your family through uh, the crisis that is coming. Uh, it will not last forever. I'm telling you, when you need it, it's going to be hard to get. Uh, so don't wait. All right. That is monkeyworksprep.com. And uh, you will be thankful that you did this. God bless. Monkey out. All right. Hey, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. Listen, it's going to be your sit rep. It is. Uh, just after 11 a.m. Central Time, coming to you from the great state of Texas, and it is April 5th, 2023. And so, uh, you know, you watch what took place yesterday, and uh, it really gets down to accountability. And, I, you know, it's on us. Uh, the reality is we have allowed this to uh, form and take place over the years. And, um, yeah, I don't know how you get the genie back in the bottle, really. It's uh, very similar to what happened uh, with the participation awards, right? You go back 30 years and you think about how we would uh, give kids uh, trophies for showing up. And, uh, you know, it didn't really matter about hard work or trying to get better. You just showed up. You got a trophy. And, uh, and so today we pay for that, right? We've got a generation or multi-generations that have no desire to really work. Um, they're used to getting free handouts. And um, uh, it's uh, very apparent in our society today. Uh, and again, that's on us. We failed uh, those generations by allowing that to take place. And so here we are today. We're watching uh, the, uh, the United States as we know it just crumble. And um, there are definitely two sets of laws that run this nation. And uh, we are definitely being run by uh, a tyrannical government body. And so um, but, you know, shame on us for allowing it to happen. That's uh, all I can say. So with that, let's uh, let's just get on into what's on the board. Uh, we're going to go over here to the mini board and uh, take a look at Skyglass as always. Uh, we're sitting around 306 today. A couple interesting things that we'll look at um, other than the usual interesting things. But uh, 306, you can see very heavy on the East Coast. Uh, West Coast is just kind of getting started uh, but uh, if we take out the Text 2 trainers and the T38s, uh, that's going to bring our number down by about 85. Puts us at around 231. So it is, uh, you know, 250 is the average when it comes to military uh, aircraft. So, okay, that is uh, where we stand right now. So let's get into the watch list. And, uh, oh, by the way, um, for those, uh, you're going to get uh, – uh, <laughs> I tried to dual stream this morning – Rumble and uh, YouTube and was not successful. So sorry, I had a little bit of a delay getting started. Uh, and that's because uh, one stream wasn't wanting to work. Uh, and that was YouTube, actually. So I've got to figure out how to make those both work at the same time. Uh, utilizing OBS. And uh, there's a way to do it. And uh, we thought we had it figured out yesterday. And today, uh, we did not. So, um, so I apologize for that. If you were over on Rumble, uh, you'll get this thing pre-recorded. And then Friday, hopefully, we have the kinks worked out for Friday's live show. So, okay. Now, let's get into the watch list as we were talking about. Uh, got a couple items that uh, just kind of out there floating around. You'll notice a multitude of E6 aircraft up. Those are Takamo, take charge and move out. Those are talking to your nukes. Uh, those are Navy birds. And then we, uh, we've got also a, a handful of Navy aircraft uh, just kind of uh, taken off out of Florida. You can see some activity there off of the East Coast near Cape Canaveral, a little spiral there. And then we get up to this side. We've got a 757-200 uh, coming back. That's uh, actually, I say coming back. It looks like it took off out of D.C. That's exec one. That's going to be uh, the first lady and uh, or Flashbang's wife, as we call her. And then C-101, uh, this is how you know you're tracking the right one because they throw some uh, uh, boogeyman aircraft in there for the picture. But uh, C-101, that's going to be um, your Homeland Security Secretary. Looks like they are airborne headed out of the D.C. area as well. 
Now let's get over here to Europe and take a look. It's a little light. Uh, this C-135, that is actually a French air refueler instead of calling it a, uh, I don't know. It's just the way they name it. So I'm taking it off my watch list now. Um, so next time we run this, it won't uh, it won't show. And then we've got a little E3 Century up over Norway, it looks like. Uh, other than that, it is really, truly light out there today from a European standpoint. Now, this one I thought was interesting. That's going to be one of your JSOC birds here, the U.S. Uh, uh, Special Op uh, Operations Command over Iraq. And uh, it's just flying as an NA, a little Dash 8, actually. And... Um, yeah, don't see that one very often, so it's kind of cool to see. And then let's get over here to the heavies. Um, you're going to notice a little spread out, a lot of stuff going on down in New Orleans. And um, we did have a surge yesterday with C-17s up into Iowa, um, but I'm not showing that on here. These are the last 24-hour tracks. And then just notice right there, New Orleans, very, very, very heavy. And then right there in, uh, looks like, the port areas are very uh, active and heavy. Uh, the, the yellow spikes, pay no attention to that. That's the Egyptian C-130 that comes in. It does that from time to time. And then a little activity up there to the northern border in Canada. Uh, but that Egyptian aircraft, for some reason, when it comes into our airspace, it shows all kinds of weird spikes as well as altitude spikes, like, you know, 80,000 feet, you know, just crazy numbers. So anyway, it's just foreign military sales coming in. Um, and then, of course, we've got uh, over in Europe, notice uh, the Germans are doing some some uh, work over Poland to the interior of Poland, the west side. And then we've got uh, a lot of stuff going on in Europe and uh, the UK, as always. Then we get down here over this side of the house. You can see um, Luxembourg, Germany, et cetera, and then down into France, down into Spain. And uh, let's see, we get over here to this side. A couple A400s coming uh, really close to Tripoli. And then uh, one of them is uh, actually, it's going to be a Turkish bird coming out of the Tripoli side. And then the other one leaving Turkey is a German Air Force. And I'm not seeing anything else from the heavies. Now, the refuelers tells a different story. Notice we've got a lot of refueling going on over the UK uh, and then down over Italy uh, to the border close uh, to Russia. And, um, and then we've got a little bit of uh, more stuff headed down. It looks like towards Constanta, uh, towards the Black Sea area. So let's get now over to Conus. As we wait for this thing, uh, it'll be there in a second. As a matter of fact, let me just speed that up for us. Let's get over to Conus. There we go. All right. So from the Conus perspective, you can see very active in the center of the United States. We've got some stuff going on down near... The Tucson border, a little bit of stuff over Nevada, over Florida. And then we get up to the eastern seaboard, and it is hotter than a junkie spoon. Lots and lots of air refueling, which would be an indicator. We've got lots and lots of fighters out over the eastern seaboard and over the uh, east coast um, areas. All right. So that's going to be your air refuelers as we kind of just uh, take a track across United States. And then let's go to the R-135s. And uh, notice that we do have, again, into Louisiana, right? Got some activity going on. Then you got a straight shot. And I don't know what that's all about right down the center um, between the Texas-Louisiana border. And then you've got a couple different layers uh, that look like they're looking at the border there, and um, which would, you know, maybe be an indicator there's some activity on the other side of that border. We've seen this for quite some time now. Uh, and when I say border, southern border, down near Texas. And then this is going to be the activity up over Japan. Again, R-135. It's a, a reconnaissance bird. It can track uh, an object the size of a soccer ball from 300 miles away, uh, and it can do a lot more than that. And, of course, you see the one that just kind of a broken trail out over the South China Sea and then in and out of Okinawa. All right, that, uh, that's where we are. Let's look at Europe and then I'll point something out. Now, you're going to notice the European side as I tilt this up a little. Disregard that one right there with the uh, the French little circle there uh, over France. That's going to be that same um, C-135 I just discontinued. But notice the running around right up on the border of Belarus and around Kaliningrad. All right, that becomes very important here, and I'll show you why. 
Uh, and then notice we ran all the way up to the northern side, right off the border of Russia. Okay. So <clears throat> then we got a little bit of work there over, looks like the Persian Gulf. Now, let's go over to the mini board, and I'll show you why we are looking at the stuff in Belarus. And um, that, uh, just to kind of tie it together uh, a little bit for you, um, which that did not do. Let's try one more channel here. There we go. Okay, let's tie the Belarus piece for us together right here. Um, the reason we're looking so closely at Belarus is because you've got um, – Troops training on Russian nuclear-capable missile systems. Now, I'm pointing this out because it is a very important data point relative to this right here, okay? Um, you may have noticed, and I've brought this up several times, uh, Putin's not messing around, and he keeps tabling nukes over and over and over again. Even though the U.S. dismisses it and says it's a non-threat, I will tell you, uh, I don't believe it. I think uh, this guy is uh, everything that comes out of his mouth and his staff's mouth is nuclear related. And that tells me uh, he is willing, if uh, if this thing goes hot, you may see him pop off a couple of nukes in the region. But this is why, right? These guys are in training on this system here, uh, mobile nukes, which is um, a big threat. Okay. So uh, let me get back over here. This is the other piece too. We'll look at this closer in a second. I've got multiple aircraft inbound from the Keys, and um, they are uh, they rolling into it looks like Louisiana, uh, but they all came in as NA call sign Liberty five four. That's showing as a C two Greyhound, uh, which is a little small Navy bird. It it uh, even though the icons look like they're they're a Lear or a Gulfstream, not accurate uh, icons for these. Uh, airspeed and altitude was way too low and slow for being, uh, you know, G3s or G4s. But uh, remember that um, the feds just went down there last Friday the 31st and dropped the team off and then picked them back up in that same location. So coincidence, probably not. We're probably, I think there has been some trials going on down here in the Keys, and we probably just relocated some folks to New Orleans, uh, if I had to guess. Okay, and that's just uh, me putting that out there. So, um, okay, let's go back over to our, our thing. We were looking at the refuelers, R-135s. So let's look at the drones. Drones is really, really light today. Uh, you'll notice that uh, just got one. It looks like a little spike coming out of Malta, and that's it. I, don't, I look at the U.S. and everywhere else, and I don't really see anything. They have been very light since they got shot down, or I say shot down, knocked down. Let's just put, uh, change our words there a little bit. Um, nothing over the U.S.? And that's it. Nothing over the Middle East. So let's go to Intel aircraft. That tells a little different story. You'll notice that we've got this, um, the one coming out of Panama. It looks like it's headed back to the States. It landed just south yesterday of uh, Miami. It looks like down in South Florida. And then we've got transitions going on. That becomes important because I see when it comes to our other surveillance aircraft, a lot of transitions happening as well. Uh, stuff on the north of the border. And then if we get back over here to, uh, to this side, um, you're going to notice that, uh, again, just like the R-135s, looking very closely at Belarus and uh, Russia, okay? Then we get down over this side of it as well. Black Sea, Constanta, the usual places that we, we do typically see them. Now, where it does start to get interesting, remember, uh, we just talked about the U.S. is training 5,000 Jordanians. Uh, Jordanian, or sorry, Palestinian troops in Jordan. And uh, now look at this aer aerial recon that's going on over Jordan. Uh, makes you kind of wonder who's doing that. Uh, I would imagine it's probably Israel taking a close look at that. So, um, but that one right there is uh, just, again, it's a data point for you. Um, and then let's get over to the survey side. This is the last three days, 21 more flights, but notice they're longer tracks. Yeah, they seem to be moving, uh, transitioning from one point to another. Uh, they may be wrapping up their survey. This would put them well over the 500 surveys in the last 30 days, mainly over the eastern United States and the northeast for the most part. Got it in Oklahoma, Kansas. We get over here to this side, very, very heavy uh, in the northeast. Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, 
uh, the whole, I mean, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Buffalo, Southern Buffalo, Northern PA, a lot of surveys. And these aren't just rail surveys, folks. That's the thing that I'm, I'm really key on pointing out. I, I, I was calling them rail surveys, but I will tell you that uh, looking at the aircraft, it's more than just rail. Okay. All right. Uh, let's get over here to this side of the house. We talked about, uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's transition into our uh, our news here and uh, what's going on with the uh, flashbang. Okay, so. That would be our new flashbang entry point there. Yeah. Uh, it took me a while to be able to watch that without just cracking up, but uh, yeah, anyway. What a hot mess. All right, so this is going to be it uh, for Wednesday. Looks like uh, he's uh, putting his uh, uh, pants on around 9.30 in the morning and then wrapping up about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Actually, that's not even him. Looks like he's having lunch um, with Bob Marley. Uh, she must have the munchies. And then that's it. It's uh, high noon, so he's got a really short day. Uh, but if we get over here to this side of the house, uh, I will show you where he's headed. And this one always makes me... For some reason, anytime I see them heading to Camp David into the bunker, I always worry a little bit just because I think, what are they up to? Okay. Um, so this, uh, you can see, this is the storms actually growing uh, through the United States right now. And uh, all of the blue boxes that you see in the yellow boxes, et cetera, uh, other than thunderstorm warnings, but a lot of power outages happening as the slop gets through the middle of the United States. Uh, but this right here is our only TFR other than the one over the senior living center. Uh, th that's going to be, you know, Camp David. He's heading there tomorrow through the next three days. So the 6th through the 9th, uh, he will be in his bunker. So, again, always makes you a little nervous of what's going on there, right? But uh, everything else, uh, this is a uh, space ops guaranteed as always. And then notice down here. This is where we just had the uh, the the little three ship or four ship of aircraft coming out of. We seen the FBI down there. Oh, it's an air show. Well, <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Looks like I've got an air show going on, but uh, probably not related to the guys leaving. And uh, and then this one here is also air show. All right, and then uh, let me see what that is off of Jacksonville. I think that's space ops as well. We'll just double check it. Now nah, just security TFR. Okay. All right, then we'll look at our no, uh, no TAMs here in just a minute because we got a lot of those going on all over the place here in the United States. So let me back away from this. Let's get into Flashbang and uh, this current uh, tyrannical administration. Uh, so you guys saw it yesterday. This is what I was really talking about at the beginning. So it looks like he pleads not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first degree. Uh, felony charges, by the way which are going to be no bueno, uh, but this is uh, not a shocker. We knew this was coming. We knew they were going to do everything they can to prevent him from running, and uh, that is the government that uh, we have put up, and we are allowing to do this. So, um, yeah, just eyes on it. It's going to get really, really interesting um, for sure. Okay, let's move away from this. Let's get over here to this piece of your Bohica moment for today. And uh, this is when I probably should have the intro of the little kid running into the sliding glass door as a superhero. But um, the new U.S.-Ukraine aid package includes HIMARS, ammo, and small arms. Now, <clears throat> look at the number here. This is what we're throwing at them. $2.6 billion just revealed, revealed uh, yesterday. So, yeah, just keep uh, putting nickels in the machine. And uh, nothing indicating that we have any intention on slowing down. But, uh, yeah, yeah, $2.6 billion of your hard-earned money. Now, let's take a look at the dollar see what's going on here. I've been watching it uh, for the last couple of days uh, just because we, uh, we know that uh, China, Russia, Saudi, everybody's working against us. Uh, and uh, this really doesn't tell much of a story other than it is a slow – again, this is just today uh, – notice – Similar to what we see in the stock market, there was a massive, like I say massive, compared to like a daily swing, a big dip that took place right here. 
just a quick free fall, and then it is recovered very quickly by a high spike and uh, that went up, and now it's bleeding back down. We see that in the stock market. What they do is basically uh, induce uh, federal dollars into something when it's in free fall, right? So if you go to the five-day, that tells a little more of the story of what's really going on. As you can see, it is in a slow bleed off like a balloon. It has lost quite a bit of ground. If we go to the 10-day, uh, or actually that's the one-month number there, it is definitely uh, trending downward. Okay, so that's your dollar, uh, and that's what we got to keep our eye on because that is what they're trying to basically get rid of. All right. Now we get rid of the Baltic Dry Index. Yesterday, um, when everything was going on with Trump, it uh, basically everything was in the red. Today, it looks like it's a little bit of a mix. Still kind of maintaining around uh, 1473. You can see uh, if you just look at the trend data here, it uh, really kind of hit the bottom around 16th of February. And then it uh, did what we call a dead cat bounce. It went up and then it has since been just kind of going back. Uh, up and down, but it's still trending downward over time. So we'll continue to watch it. Again, if you're not familiar with the Baltic uh, index, dry index, it's um, really tracking commodities and the mo movement of commodities uh, on uh, ocean freight, et cetera, things that are uh, getting purchased and moved around the world. So when this stuff gets really low like this, uh, it just tells you that uh, the ports and the ships aren't really moving a lot. Now, this stuff here is not items that we really buy from China. And so it really isn't going to move the needle for us in terms of stuff coming inbound to the country. Okay. And if that wasn't enough, U.S. factory orders have tumbled yet again month over month in February and uh, signaling a collapse to come. Now, if you look at the, the, the graphic here, just notice this right here, uh, just kind of give you the cliff notes on it. That's going to be... Um, the pandemic. Okay. So everything obviously shut down. Notice we have had other instances where uh, we had bad numbers, right? By the quarter or by the months. Uh, but then you get over here and just notice we're starting to see the trend again, uh, back to back. And um, we'll just keep our eye on it. But it looks like uh, we, we hit kind of a weird spike trend data. And then it's again, back down, just like the dollar, just like everything else we're watching. Uh, it is just slowly, slowly, slowly going down. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to get into our no TAMs now, but uh, it looks like the Navy is is testing some secret next gen tech off the coast of California. We'll look at that no TAM box. This is, um, <clears throat> according to the article, it is basically communications between. Uh, it's like, I guess the best way to put it, it allows all of the forces to communicate effectively with each other. That is just sum it up for you. Okay. Um, so I eh, don't need to go into the rest of it, but that's what's going on. If you see the boxes off of the, the Southern side of California, that's what this is. Okay. And then this one out here, I, I just thought the name of this one was kind of funny. This is, uh, the tequila mixer. <laughs> so whatever that means, uh, probably got some high speed boys out here doing some stuff. Yeah, and I only say that because when they start naming them things like tequila mixer, it's usually usually your pipe hitters, you know, they got a good sense of humor. And so anyway, all right, let's get over to the rest of the United States. You'll just notice we've got a couple blocks here headed uh, to the north side uh, of um, Syracuse, Buffalo. That's kind of near and eh, maybe up near the 10th Mountain Division area. Um, I may be wrong on that, but um Anyway, that's going to be flashbang in the next couple of days. And then if we back up, you'll just notice a couple uh, danger boxes off the East Coast. Same thing here. And then we get over to Europe. Uh, we're still doing some SAT testing over here. And then we've got exercises going on on this side, et cetera. Very, very busy, uh, you know, just for all of Europe. So, okay. Now let's talk cyber attacks for a minute. Give this a second to marinate. It, uh, it's looking just like it has always looked. This is our what I call the Star Wars map, and uh, we're just getting peppered on a regular basis. As you can see, very one-directional. Everybody coming at us. All right. We talked about that. Let's get over to this piece. Uh, NATO plans to uh, uh, have a record air exercise in Finland. 
um, as Finland joins the alliance. That took place yesterday, the, the official announcement, I think, um, that uh, Finland was joining NATO. Now, it looks like they're going to do this uh, Air Defender 23 exercise, 100 U.S. aircraft, 2,000 troops, the largest transatlantic movement in Air National Guard uh, history. So um, that's, you know, we'll watch it and see what happens. We'll probably see uh, an uptick uh, relative to uh, flights going in and out of Finland in that area. Uh, but just give you a little bit uh, of a flavor of what this is. It's a 10-day exercise in June, and uh, they'll have about 100 aircraft um, flying into Germany, and then uh, it'll be a, just a mix of different A-10s, F-15s, F-35s, F-16s, et cetera. And um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Uh, June, who knows what the world is going to look like by June, and uh, the timing of that may be very interesting. Okay, let's get over here to uh, our bases. Now, let me see. I kicked it off here. This is going to be Biggs Army Airfield, as always. Just notice that we're starting to see more aircraft inbound. We've got some Trip 7s, some 757s, some 767s. That's Omni, National Cargo, and United. And then outbound, you've got United headed to San Francisco. That's a home base. So more than likely, that aircraft is empty headed back. It's just what they call a deadhead. Um, and then you get down here. National Cargo, that looks to be headed up to Bedford, Massachusetts. And then the Omni is headed over to um, Oak Harbor. Okay. Uh, more than likely, these are carrying troops. Now, let's get over to Dover and take a look at what we've got on the board. We've got a Reach aircraft. We've got a UPS coming in from their home base. Louisville, is um, uh, that's going to be headquarters for uh, UPS. And then let's go over here to this side of it and see what happens. That reach looks to be headed to Norfolk. And then we've got, uh, there it is right here. So the UPS flight is actually going to be rolling out to Cologne. Uh, that's going to be to the eastern side, uh, sorry, the western side of Poland. So we'll keep our eye on that particular base. Well, it's not really a base. It's actually a, a dual purpose. It's uh, military and commercial uh, aircraft flying in and out of there, but uh, it looks like they are staging some other equipment in other areas of Poland. So it turns into a camber flight. More than likely, that's carrying artillery and not troops, if I had to guess. And I say artillery, things that go boom. Okay. All right. Now, this is going to be, what are we looking at here? Ramstein. All right. And very, very active and busy. We do have a Navy logistics bird inbound. We've got a camber flight coming in. Let's see. This is Spain coming inbound with their uh, air defense aircraft. And um, another camber flight rolling in. An Atlas Air coming in, one of the wide bodies. And then let's go over here to our departure board. Let's see if we can start to identify some of these. Uh, looks like this one's rolling out as a camber flight to a destination unknown Reach, we got another CNV, that one left. Looks like that was a round trip to Amari. And then we've got another Reach. Uh, the Camber flight looks like that's 747-400 headed to Kuwait. And that's going to be Ramstein. And uh, very active today. And then over to RZE, again, this is a forward operating base on the border of Ukraine. Or I say on the border, it's just offset in to the western side of Ukraine border uh, down in southern Poland. Uh, again, this is going to be uh, French Air Brigade coming in. Let's see what else we have. An Antonov, that's one of your big boys, like your 124s, uh, coming inbound. Uh, that's, who is that? Hang on, let's look up. Okay, this is uh, Sp Spanish Ministry of Defense coming in from Madrid, Spain. There's a uh, little MD-11 coming in, camber flight, camber flight, German Air Force, camber flight, and let's see who this is. Nope. So very, very active. A uh, lot of wide bodies still. So this means they're still probably just racking and stacking um, equipment ready to, ready to go to war. Uh, notice the 747. Uh, this is going to be Coletta. Coletta, both of them wide bodies. You get down here, German Air Force. There's a UPS leaving. So it is uh, coming across, bringing some stuff, and then headed back. Uh, looks to be as a UPS flight, probably doesn't have anything on it. Atlas Air, another wide body. 
Uh, an MD-11 is a pretty big aircraft, by the way. It's considered a wide body. It doesn't have the same functions as a 747-400 uh, with the nose that pops open, and these guys can roll stuff in. But uh, it can still carry quite a bit of equipment. Uh, so then another Coletta error. So you've got uh, two, three Colettas uh, inbound uh, or actually outbound um, from RZE, Poland. All right. Then over here to National Cargo, just have a couple flights. Look like one's coming out of Biggs Army Airfield, headed to Bedford, Massachusetts. We saw that on the board over in Biggs. And then we've got two 747s, uh, Anchorage, and this one is Maputo International. Uh, one of them, Anchorage to JFK, that's probably going to head across the drink as well. So there you have those. Uh, look at this one. Ah, oh, there's Maputo. You know, down in Southern Africa. So that could be anything. Troops. Uh, I do know National Cargo does have a contract to move troops, too. So there you have that. And then we get over here to Western Global, and they've got nothing on the board today, which is a little unusual. We'll move on. Camber flights. Take a look at these. We've got five. We had six. One of them just landed. Two of them big boys, 747s. This is an unknown, but this one's coming out of Bangor, Maine. Moody uh, Air Force Base in Valdosta. Lake Hood, Anchorage, Alaska. Travis Air Force Base in Ramstein. So uh, this is going to be a mix of... Uh, troops and uh, equipment. And then again, this is going to be Omni coming inbound Shannon to Norfolk. And then we've got uh, Kadena, uh, which is Okinawa, headed into McCord. And uh, that, uh, again, both sides of the drink here. And then last up is going to be the Royal Air Force. Uh, a little busy this morning. Looks like we've got a lot of moves headed into... Uh, let's see. One, it looks to be heading into Jordan, and the other headed down into the Middle East, further south in the Middle East. Uh, keep in mind, this is Iran here. So it uh, looks like the Brits are very active with us across the region, as always. Okay, well, listen, that's going to do it for today's sit rep. Uh, we'll just continue to watch what happens domestically. We're going to keep an eye on the surveys to see if they continue. Uh, or if they wrap it up, and then uh, we'll just you know monitor the situation there, and uh, time will tell what exactly that was for. Uh, no doubt about it. Okay, and then everything else looks to be still on the uptick uh, as we spread ourselves then around the world, and uh, it's just a matter of time. So keep that powder dry and stay frosty. We'll uh, we'll see you on the other side here soon. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.